Welcome back to the sixth episode on how to create your very own programming language. Uh, so before this video starts, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been watching my videos uh, and who has subscribed to my channel. We have just hit 100 subscribers, which was sooner than I expected. Uh, but anyways, in this episode, we are going to be adding the if statement to the language. In the next two episodes after, we are going to be adding the for and while statements, and in these three episodes, we're not going to be really doing anything new, so I suggest you try implement these features before watching the videos. So the way the if statement is going to work in our language, which is very similar to the basic language, uh, is we're going to have an if keyword, followed by some condition, uh, then the then keyword, and then some expression, uh, which occurs if the condition is true. We will also have the ability to use the elif keyword, which basically means else if, and then you can put in another condition and expression. And then finally, we will be able to use the else keyword followed by an expression. Uh, so this expression will only be evaluated if none of the conditions are true. Unlike most other languages, our if statement is going to be an expression by default, so that means we can uh, put it inside other expressions. So for example, uh, we can assign this price variable uh, to the result of this if statement. So the first thing we have to do is add in some new tokens for our if expression. So we're going to need four new keyword tokens. So we're going to need the if keyword, uh, the then keyword, uh, the elif keyword, and then the else keyword. And that's all we have to do for the tokens. We don't even have to update the lexer. So the next thing we have to do is update the grammar rules. And we don't even have to worry about the order of operations for the if statement. Uh, because there's no way we can add parentheses around this statement to change how it behaves. So the best place to add this if expression is to the atom rule because it's the only place we'll never have to use parentheses. So if we added in the if expression to the expression rule for example then if we try use it in any other rule uh, we'll have no choice but to use parentheses. So I've added in this new if expression rule to the atom. So this if expression will look for an if keyword followed by an expression uh, which will be the condition. Uh, then we have the then keyword and then another expression. And then we can have zero or more elifs. Uh, so I've just used this asterisk, which means zero or more. And it's the same thing, except we're using the elif keyword. And then optionally, we can have the else at the end, uh, followed by an expression. So this question mark just means optional. So we'll come down to the parser now and add in this new rule. So we'll begin with the atom method and we'll just paste this in. So this will look uh, for an if keyword, and if that's the case, then we know we have to look for an if expression. Uh, so we'll call this if expression method, which we'll define in a moment. We will, as usual, have to wrap that in result.register, and we're assigning the result to if expression. Uh, so we just check for an error, and if there is none, we'll just return uh, the expression, and we'll wrap that in result.success. So I've just pasted in this if expression method. It's quite long, so I don't really want to type it out in this video, but we'll go through it. So we just create a parse result here at the start, and then we create a cases list and an else case variable, uh, and you'll see what those are for in a minute. So for the if expression, we are expecting an if keyword, so if we can't find an if keyword, uh, then we just return this failure saying we expected if. If we do find the if keyword, we just go ahead and advance, and then we want to look for an expression, which is the condition for this if statement. So we just check for an error again, and then after that we want to look for a then keyword. So if we can't find one, uh, we'll again return an error saying expected then. And if we do find it, we'll advance. Then we want to look for the expression which comes after the then keyword, and then we also want to check for an error. And then what we're doing is we're appending to the cases array uh, this tuple here. So this tuple just contains the condition and then the expression which should be evaluated if the condition is true. So that's all that the cases array holds. So after that we are looking for zero or more elifs. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're just checking while the current token uh, is an elif keyword. So then we just advance to the next token and then we're again looking for a condition. We are again expecting a then keyword so if we can't find one we just need to return this error. And after we advance we then need to look for another expression. And then we'll again append uh, the condition and the expression uh, to the cases list. Then finally we might have an else keyword. So we'll just look if there is an else keyword. If there is, we advance and then we want to look for another expression. And all we do here is just assign else case to this expression. And actually we can just put an else case in here and get rid of this line. 
So then finally we return a new if node which we'll define in a second and this just takes in the cases and the else case and then we wrap that in result.success. So we just need to come over to the nodes and add in a new if node class. So we'll go class if node and this if node needs to take in the cases and uh, the else case and so we'll just assign that to self.cases uh, and self.else case. So then we need to give this node a position start. So what we're going to do is just get uh, the first cases in the cases list. So this will now give us a tuple and then we want to get the first element of the tuple which will be the expression. And we can just get the position start from this expression. So the position end is going to be a bit more complicated. So we want to get the position end from the else case if it exists. But if it doesn't exist we want to get the last element in the cases list. So we'll just do self.cases and then len self.cases minus 1 and then we need to get the first element of that tuple again which will be the expression. So if we wrap that in parentheses we can then just get the position end from whichever one we have. So the final thing we have to do then in this episode is update the interpreter. Uh, so what I've done again is I've just pasted in this visit if node method. So we just create our runtime result and then we go through every pair of conditions and expression in the nodes cases. So what we do here is we visit that condition and we need to of course wrap it in result.register and then we get a condition value. So after we check if there is an error we then need to check if this condition value is true. Uh, so we'll add in this is true method in a moment. So if it is true then we want to evaluate the expression by visiting it. And so now we have the expression value. Uh, again we'll check for an error. But if there's no error we'll then return this value and we'll wrap it in result.success. So if none of the conditions were true, we'll then check if the node has an else case. If it does, we can just evaluate the else case expression and we just assign that to else value. And then we'll check for an error and then we can just return this value. If there is no else case, then we're just going to return none as the value. So if we come over to the number class, all we have to do is add in this new is true method. Uh, so we'll just come down here and we'll define is true. Uh, so we've, we have decided that a number is false if the value is 0 and it is true if it is not equal to 0. Uh, so we'll just return self.value not equal to 0. So we have to do one final quick thing. So before this video if we typed in anything into our shell uh, there would always be a value and we'd print it out on the screen. But after adding in the if expression if an else keyword is not used then there's a chance that no value will be returned. So we just need to quickly update shell.py and actually check if there is a result. So just elif result. So if we run the program now, everything should be working. So if we check if 5 equals 5, then we'll just return 1, 2, 3. So now if we run this expression, we get the value 1, 2, 3. Uh, but if the condition is not true, uh, then simply no value comes up. If you want a value to come up, then we can use the else keyword. So we can also use our if expression inside variable assignments or in any other situation and it will still work perfectly so we can see we get a result of 40. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Although at the moment we are cramming the if statement into a single line, in the final episode of the series we will be adding multi-line support for everything as we will be adding the feature uh, to run uh, external files. So that's going to be it for this episode. In the next two episodes, as I've already mentioned, we will be adding for and while statements. And then after that, we are going to be adding in functions. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have any problems. And subscribe uh, to keep up to date with all my videos. And I will see you in the next episode.